He's getting set, his Strayhaven Slaters in the championship game here at the Manus Shea Tip-Off Tournament. They'll be taking on the Honor Valley Honors. And as you can see on Fairhaven Squad, they'll be wearing the dark blue uniforms. I believe they'll get the introductions first. And I tell you, it took a while for the teams to get here. We played a double overtime game, MSJ against Honor Valley. Honor Valley prevailing 62-57. And then of course Fairhaven with that last second buzzer beater shot there to win 45-44. Outside PA. Also number 15, senior Joel Hernandez. Number 23, Junior, Nate Marcel. Starting it forward, number 21, sophomore, Christian Duran. And the other player, number 31, Senior, Keith Schneider. Starting at guard, number 20, senior, Justin Latola. At the other guard, number 13, senior, Grant Jacobowski. Starting at forward, number 24, senior, Tom Markowski. At the other forward, number 32, senior, Eli Christiana. Number 33, Senior Alex Sinkowitz. Out of battle was coached by Bob Rock. Would you please rise for the playing of our national anthem? See Doran 21 in the dark blue uniforms on the left side, and Sinkowitz on the white wet uniforms on the right side, and They'll be pivotal in the pivot tonight. We'll have the jump ball championship game, MSA tip-off tournament 2007, and Hernandez will let it go out of bounds and be white basketball. This will be Fairhaven. Jacob Bowski will take the ball out of bounds, and he'll be joined in the back court by Lertola. I think a little contrast in styles, just my opinion. Fairhaven wants to come down, use half-court offense. If the break's there, take it, but pretty much, you know, take some possessions, take some passes, possession time, and met some passes. And, be a more deliberate paced offense. They're coming out in a zone defense for Haven. It's Otter Valley, on the other hand, I don't think they mind getting it up with Florida a little bit, getting it a little more wide open, pick up the tempo a little bit. So we'll see basically to me who can control the tempo and who can control the rebounding will probably have the advantage. And that's Christian Christiana. That's Eli Christiana with the first bucket of the game. And it's a three point shot. So they had a lot of patience that offensive trip down the floor and it paid off in a three point shot. That's Doran with the basketball, and he'll come to Marcel. We're gonna have a foul on Christiana. Yeah, got him on the arm, got the hat called, and we'll have Marcel take the basketball out of bounds on the far side. No, we won't. We'll have Condit covering. Condit will take it out of bounds. Three nothings. Otter Valley with the lead, and again, you just you say, "Oh, it's travel by Hernandez." Yeah. Say it's early season. It's just. A, tip-off tournament, I'll tell you what, anytime you get to play for a championship, whether it's tiddlywinks, checkers, or basketball, it's a big deal. It's a pretty much three quarters full house right now, probably gonna get more people here as the game progresses along. You got two good teams, two very good coaches out there, and some young men who really putting a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into this. Honor Valley with the basketball, Sinkowitz with the dribble above the arc, that's not where you want. I'm gonna get the ball to Latola to Jacobowski. They'll just lob it back to Lertola. Very versatile Lertola is as far as hitting the inside or the driving to the inside, slashing through the paint or stepping out and hitting the three-pointer. Here's Hernandez. He was the hero of the game against Montpelier as he hit a shot with 1.8 seconds to go. And Doran from the outside, no good. Markowski with his first rebound. I thought Markowski was uh, considered a candidate for player of the game in Honor Valley's win over MSJ. He wasn't the leading scorer, but he certainly did every facet of the game above and beyond the Call of Duty, that'll be a takeaway. Three nothing, Honor Valley with the lead. Six minutes to go, first quarter action. We played it, we have a winner tonight. We'll stay on and have the trophy presentation. Ooh, we got a late whistle, we got a foul called as Schneider went to the floor and got a push called on 
Otter Valley. Ball will go out of bounds. It's going to be the second team foul. First foul on Lertola. They want to spin. He had good position. And oh, wow. Yay. Nothing Sinkowitz could do about that. He switched hands and just did a half hook up and over him and in. That was a pretty smart move by Dorn. They'll go down to Sinkowitz. He'll ball fake, go up and travel. Yeah. I'll tell you what. Remember the other night? Well, maybe you don't, so I'll tell you about it. In the opening round, Doran got two quick fouls in the first two minutes of the ball game, sat down, came in in the second quarter, played less than a minute, picked up a third foul. So tonight, I'm sure he wants to come out and establish that that was just a fluky off night and have a big night tonight and stay on the floor and play. And you're watching Peg TV Channel 15 Sports, Munger Vision bringing you this championship game, the tip-off tournament finals, Fairhaven with the dark blue uniforms, Honor Valley with the white. I'd like to welcome both schools' viewing areas. They both get Channel 15, so there's no excuse for them to miss this. It was cold and snowy outside, and all you had to do was stay home and turn on the TV and watch the championship game. Jump ball called, Hernandez comes out of there, and oh, he's fired up. They're going to have Marcel take the... Yeah, Marcel will take the ball out of bounds, 23 on the baseline for Fairhaven. He'll get it into Schneider and he'll snap the ball up to Condit. Condit off the screen set for Marcel, will turn fire and hit the side of the backboard. Ball fought for Markowski, will take it away from his own player. Do a little curl move and get it to Lertola. Lertola with a quick push. And that's blocked out of bounds by Dorn. Oh, this isn't my gym, but get out of here anyways, he said. And that was a big time block. And oh yeah, he's coming out with a little different attitude tonight. I'm telling you, you get three fouls in three minutes, and that will change your next game's attitude, and he's done it. Jacob Bowski will take the ball back out of bounds as was slapped away, and it's 3-2, to two, Honor Valley with the lead. They've got the ball, and they've got it into Lertola. Jacob Bowski wants to go down inside to sink away, so play a little inside-outside. Jacob Bowski knocked the front of the rim, ball still free, and knocked away, still free, and we're going to have a foul called. Wow. The foul will be on Jacob Bowski. And it came from the trail official behind the play. 4.56 to go in the first quarter. And Honor Valley's Hernandez with the basketball. And it's going to be Lertola that will pick him up right between circles. They'll get it to Schneider. Schneider, just an all-around well-balanced player. Now it's going to be a bucket for Condit. <laughs> Nothing but twine. Two-point shot, 4-3. to three. Fairhaven with their first lead of the basketball game. Oh, I tell you, settle in. This is going to be a dandy. MSJ winning the consolation game over Montpelier to give their first year head coach Pat Paquette, an Honor Valley graduate, his first one. Sinkowitz, oh, he was doubled on the baseline. He turned, they kicked it out, and then that was Marcel that came down and made the steal. And this is going to be Hernandez bringing the ball up as we near the midway point of the first quarter, 4:15 and counting. Schneider came out to meet the pass. Top of the arc goes off to Condit. Condit looks, fires now. It'll be off the mark. And Markowski with two rebounds now wants to outlet the ball. We'll just bring it up on the dribble. Give it to Jacobowski. Jacobowski on the trail. We'll hit Lertola. Lertola back to Jacobowski. Pass up to three. Wants to spin. And there's the trap. They're going to that nice timing on the traps on the top of the arc. And that shot's going to be outside. One thing that I'm a little surprised at is Fairhaven controlling the boards very easily here early on. And there's Doran away from the basket right now. He's already made his presence felt here early in his contest as Marcel will have the ball. and They'll bring it out to Condit. Condit being crowded defensively, just didn't let it bother him. Got it out to Schneider. He wants the baseline. Turns, fires, got it. Oh, Schneider with a big time move. Keith Schneider with a college move right there. 6-3 Fairhaven. Jacob Bowski will have the ball over on his side in that zone. Tough to get a ball down inside, and they got a fall called. Travel called. Schneider. And Doran there. And Sinkowitz hitting the deck, called for the travel. And I'll catch up on the subs. For Fairhaven coming in is Alex Breslin. And Godzik, number 10, coming in. Godzik came off the bench the other night in the opening round here and did a great job. Gave him some instant energy. Double clutch. Hernandez almost got the shot to drop. He'll draw the fall, and I believe two shots in the process. Yes, it will be two shots. So Hernandez at the line, shooting two, stops the clock with three minutes even to go. And first quarter, Todd Savage coming in for Doran. Yeah, it's got two shots, so he's got to come back in on the second shot. 
No damage done. They just send him back to the sideline, and Hernandez getting set with his first free throw. Six to three right now, Fairhaven to lead. And that is four team fouls on Otter Valley. None yet on Fairhaven, and that shot will not happen. Now Savage will come in for Doran. As Hernandez will look, fire, and get it. Got one and two, makes it seven to three. Otter Valley had that one bucket from Christiana to take the lead three nothing, and they've been outscored seven, seven to oh run right now by Fairhaven. Fairhaven in that zone, and I tell you, they are reversing the ball, but they've got to get some shots like that to drop. Jacobowski for three, makes it seven to six now, and they reverse the ball nicely against that zone defense, and that's the key to it, of course. And it's got to be rapid passing. Savage stepped out, now Godzik, nowhere to get the shot off. He was covered rather tightly. Ball being held by Schneider, they'll come back to Breslin. He's cut off on a penetration at the free throw line. Godzik for a three ball, not the shot they wanted, and boy, I think it went off for Markowski out of bounds. There's a good battle between Schneider and Markowski on the baseline, and Markowski, like I said, just played an all-around super game Friday night here in the opening round. For Otter Valley, and oh, Schneider went down, and they're going to call a foul on Markowski. And that'll be the fifth team foul, and that's big. 2.15 to go, first quarter, five fouls as a team already on Otter Valley. Just two away from the one-on-one -on -one situation, with still the whole second quarter and two-plus minutes here. And they have a little discussion there, and they'll take the ball out on the far side of the court. And they'll get it into Godzik. That's Jacobowski coming way out to play Godzik, and I don't think that's a bad idea, putting pressure on the ball up high, really seriously. Especially with Doran out of the basketball game right now, that takes away that threat down inside, or the imminent threat. Karkowski reaching, gotta be careful not to pick him up there. Schneider turns, Schneider, bounce, bounce, no good. Almost tipped in, and Schneider, great example right there, following his shot up. Ball down to Jacobowski, makes the catch, gets pushed, pushed out of bounds. Yep, nice job, sportsman wise, Schneider helping him up afterwards. And that'll be the first ball called on Fairhaven, and it comes with 1.48 to go in the first quarter. Score is 7 to 6. Slater's in the dark blue uniforms with the lead over Honor Valley. Sinkowitz hasn't been heard from yet. He's got a matchup down inside against Savage. I'm, I was waiting to see if they're going to try to get Sinkowitz the ball down inside while Doran was on the bench for getting a breather. Oh, Markowski had the ball fake at the defender's near, didn't pull the trigger, gave it back to Doran. There's Sinkowitz on the drive, no. Had everything but the basket, and Savage will be fouled. No, jump ball called, oh ho ho ho. That's gonna be out of bounds to Otter Valley, and that was physical. That's cool if, they can, if they're consistent with that type of call. 127 to go in the opening quarter. It's been played like a championship game. Good crowd, good game. Hope you enjoyed the tournament this year. All the, the games brought to you by Munger Vision and a lot of fun. Good way to kick off the high school basketball season. Got some more CSA college basketball coming up for you at a later date on Channel 15. Markowski caught the ball on the blocks, got fouled, and Savage called for the foul. And so Jacob Bowski will take the ball out of bounds on the baseline. With 69 seconds to go in the first quarter, Sinkowitz will pop it out to Christiana. Lertola, he's been quiet. Jacob Bowski catch, fire finishes. Otter Valley with the lead back. They had it at three to nothing, and they have it now at eight to seven. That was just a nice read between two players very familiar with each other, Lertola and Jacobowski. Schneider, top of the arc. Between the circles, come off to Savage. Savage with Sinkowitz. Nice cushion by Sinkowitz. Oh, too much juice on the ball. Godzik had the right idea, but he put a Roger Clemens fastball in there and expected his teammate Hernandez be able to make the catch without a baseball mitt. 40 seconds to go in the opening quarter. Markowski to Lertola, back to Markowski, fades away, and off the glass and in. Markowski with the bucket. 10 to seven, Otter Valley's lead goes to three with 30 seconds to go. Opening quarter. Again, public access website, Channel 15's website is pegtv.com. They're located in building 24 of the House Center and their phone number is 
0151, 10 seconds on the clock, and this is Breslin with the basketball. He'll come off to Schneider. Schneider looking, looking, looking. Puts the ball on the floor, time ticking down. Markowski helped out defensively. Godzik's going to let it fly, and no. Rebound will be Markowski, and that's going to be it. First quarter will come to an end for Haven. Seven and Honor Valley 10 in the championship game from the Common Avenue Gym. You see 23 is Marcel. He'll be bringing the ball into play for Haven. Now the first possession here, the second quarter of play. Godzik will get the ball. He stays in. He didn't start the game, but he came in at a substitution. And he'll start the second quarter of play. Dorn in there, and like I said, he had a Christian Dorn. Had a huge first few minutes of the ball game. That gets away from Schneider, and he's got to pick it up because if he lets it keep going, it's going to become Markowski picking it up and going to the hole. It's going to be a backcourt violation, and they'll have the ball on the side out. It'll be Jacob Bowski, number 13, bringing the basketball out of bounds for Otter Valley. If you're just joining us, I hope you got a good reason why you're late. It's Otter Valley with the lead in the title game, and a whistle called up top, and we'll get the call. And I'll be on Gazik to fall. Will be his first personal team's third. And that stops the clock with 7.39 to go in the half. I never really got the feeling either team came out tight like before a title game. They're very familiar with the coaching styles. But they kind of probably knew what to expect from each other. And they'll be seeing each other again later in the season anyways. Jacobowski left alone. No. He had time to think, set square, and just hit the back of the rim. It'll go out of play. And it'll be fair haven with the basketball. I started to tell you, I got, uh, got number 15 coming in the ball game. Joy Mazzaro is coming in for Otter Valley on a substitution. Got more CSJ College basketball, men's and women coming up for you. And, and uh, I know the next game that you'll see on Channel 15 will be the Johnson State game. And that should be a dandy, so we'll be looking for that. Also, the Mill River girls open their home basketball schedule, uh, both the JV and the varsity contest. And a travel called, and the ball will turn over. And it'll be Jacob Olski taking the ball out of bounds, along with Lertola in the backcourt for Otter Valley. Then, of course, the MSJ boys, we've already seen, we'll have the MSJ, I'll have the MSJ girls basketball see, games throughout the season, along with the West Rutland girls basketball games throughout the season. So, And then ice hockey, I'll be down covering not all, but some of the MSJ boys ice hockey games. They have uh, conflicts. They have a lot of basketball games going on tonight. There's hockey games, and i got to be honest with you, I'm just getting old, and the cold bothers me and the equipment, and my camera, too, so I'm going to... The Knights, there's a conflict between basketball and hockey. I'm going to take basketball, and it's nothing personal. It's just until they make a warm spot for the media or for Channel 15 to shoot from, that's the way it's going to be. Oh, Jacob Bowski. He couldn't believe that himself, yeah. Well, if he does that on this shot, then I'm actually it's a violation to ball Gordon Fairhaven, and he's a much better shooter than that. Didn't get either one of them. Ball tipped around, taken down out there by Condit. Condit number 14 for the Slaters has the ball. He's going to bring it up the court himself. 10-7. We're waiting for the first points of the second quarter. Guys, it came back to meet the pass right in front of Lertola, who couldn't believe he did not steal the basketball. And Doran, who played inside and was effective, starts from the outside and goes inside, fades away, nails it. 10-9 now. That's a pretty tough shot to stop from happening right there if you look at it defensively. Mazeros to Jacobowski, they'll go down inside to Markowski, he traveled. Yeah, good defense. Good defense from Schneider and Condit. And Nick Pattis, number 40, coming in the ball game for Otter Valley. So Pattis in the basketball game, in the white uniform, wearing number 40. Hernandez has been a little quiet offensively tonight. We're a lot of time left. It's 10 to nine, Otter Valley with the one point lead in the second quarter. They'll get it to Dorn, and Christian Dorn will come up between circles, actually at the top of the arc, and Marcel with the catch. Yeah, they're running that motion. They're running the high post. The shot is in! Schneider! We'll get Fairhaven back to lead at 11 to 10. And honestly, this is how I expect the evening to go. This should be a barn burner, a Donnybrook, and every other old cliche you can think of to describe a good basketball game. Zero, so hold it up and get Fairhaven in that zone defense. They'll get it on the baseline. They'll get it to Sinkowitz, and his pass was caught. Boy, tight space, and they looked for Pattis, got it to Pattis, and he was pushed and foul called. It's going to be on Hernandez. The foul will be, and each team now with five fouls apiece as 
Coming in for Fairhaven will be Ellis, number 22. Dan Ellis, number 22 in the basketball game for the Slaters. As opposed to the opening night for both these schools, the uh, well, Sinkowitz missed. Sinkowitz got it. Sinkowitz stayed with it. Nobody boxed him out. They watched his first shot miss. He just went and got it and put it up and in. 12 to 11, Honor Valley recaptures the lead. The substitutions were a lot more liberal and more often in the first night of play than it is tonight. And you'd expect that. Condit, no. Rebound. Doran kept it alive, gets it to Ellis, and he'll just recycle back to Schneider. Schneider, just a real good athlete to watch play. Condit, that was blocked. Comes down to his teammate, puts it up, and got it! Oh, Ellis, quick thinking. Markowski back off the bench for Otter Valley, going to the scores table. He'll be checking in at the next opportunity for the Otters. They hesitated, they shot, and they had to adjust. Sinkowitz had to adjust for Doran, and it threw a shot off. And with a 13-12 lead, Fairhaven has the ball, and Hernandez will bring it up. Fairhaven with the lead with 4.31 to go in the half of the championship game on Munger Vision. Yeah, Jacob Bielski put the hip out there and got called for it. Yeah, and they're going to allow Markowski now to come into the basketball game, and Markowski will relieve the zeros for Honor Valley. You see Jacob Bielski go over. That's the sixth team foul, Jacob Bielski's second personal foul. So the next foul that Honor Valley commits will be the one-on-one -on -one situation for Perhaven. Dorn, he'll hold, he'll look, he'll get it to Schneider. Pattis able to fight through the screen and get out there. Ellis. Hernandez, that's just about the kind of shot he hit to win at the buzzer, so it was beyond the three-point arc. Jacob Bielski with the rebound and the bring-up himself will hit the trailer and plays Lertola. He works off the screen, has his shot blocked by Dorn, and then Dorn will pick up the tip pass, and he's looking for a guard, and he'll find Hernandez. For Haven with a one-point lead, trying to extend it here as Christiana comes off the bench. There's a cut inside, and as well read, jump ball. Well read, Markowski and Pattis. Both saw the move by Schneider, went to him, got in the passing lane and tied the basketball up. Pattis back to the bench. Good minutes off the bench by Pattis for Otter Valley. Now we'll allow Christiana to come into the contest. He hit the game's first basket. It was a three-pointer and he's got the basketball now. See Jacob Bielski make the grab, go to Lertola. Lertola's been held scoreless so far. Oh, Schneider went around another good player, Markowski, tipped the ball away from him and made the steal. This is a grinded out affair. Right now, I would have to say to you, my opinion is the tempo completely favors Fairhaven, the tempo at which the game is being played. Alice planted the back foot, almost traveled, but held it down. They'll whip the pass all the way across the baseline, get it to Schneider. He'll do a complete spin and almost kiss it in around the rim and in. He's going to be sinking with the basketball to Lertola. Lertola explodes through the hole and lost it. Yeah, it got knocked out of his hands, goes out of bounds off from Otter Valley. And Savage coming in the ball game for Doran. I like the move here. Marcel coming in for Ellis for Fairhaven too. Doran playing with zero fouls right now. He's in a significant part of the contest right now. Three minutes to go in the half. You've got the lead. This is a nice way of getting him out of there and keeping him fresh and foul free for the second half of play. We can really crank him up. 2.52 to go, and Condit will walk it up against Jacobowski. Jacobowski in the white for Honda Valley, and Condit in the blue for Fairhaven. They'll snap the passes. One thing I've noticed, Fairhaven, it's both teams, but especially Fairhaven tonight, really crisp passing. They know what they want to do with it. Up and over, and in, Marcel. Okay, so what happened was two different things there. The basket was good, and then after the shot, a completely different player than who shot the ball committed the foul. Each team now with six personal, each team with six team fouls now. Ellis coming in for Savage, who's got two fouls. He'll sit down. And now with Savage and Doran both out of the ball game for Fairhaven, you would think Iron Valley might try to go to Sinkowitz down inside and pound the ball into him. Take advantage of it while he's got more real estate to work with and a size advantage down low. Boy, Christiana able to get the handle on the ball. This is Jacob Bowski. Schneider will go and play on that side of the zone. He'll pick up Sinkowitz. Markowski fakes in, running hook, no good. Pump fake up and no. Ball will come down. Christiana will recycle that. Two offensive rebounds that possession for 
Honor Valley. And Lertola, not going to get the second bounce either. Jacobowski had it, and then when he came down from being up in the air so high, the ball just taken away by Schneider. A tad under two minutes to go, 15 to 12, Fairhaven with the lead, and that's a tad under two minutes to go in the second quarter of play. Condit goes inside the screen and puts it up. No, off, way off the mark. And see Christiana forced to bring the ball up himself. Now he'll go over the top to Lertola. And God took off the bench at the scorer's table for Fairhaven. There's the pass inside and there's the push. Uh, Ellis playing from behind, went through him, got the foul. I gotta tell you, I would be pounding the ball in these last two minutes to Sinkowitz, why he had a the, the significant advantage down inside. And besides Godzik, number 10, coming in for Fairhaven, Breslin, number 13, also coming in for the Slaters. And this is just the one and one. That's the first ball on Ellis, seventh on the team. No. I tell you, Otter Valley, just a whole different looking team tonight. They haven't found their rhythm. The only down three, that's the big thing, is neither team's burning it up scoreboard wise. Breslin with the ball and a minute 25 to go on the clock. They wait for Schneider. Schneider looks, looks. Comes off on his side to Ellis, and then they run the motion up top. There's a grab by Godzik. Well, I'd expect him to take a lot of time off the clock here just because this is their style. A lot of passes, a lot of possession time. Believe me, if a backdoor cut became open, they would pop it in there. Other than that, oh, Schneider on the corner cut. Lost the dribble off his foot, and one minute even to go. In the second quarter, Otter Valley with the ball on a turnover, down three. And this is Lertola. He's, again, not in the scoring column yet. He was very effective Friday night's game. And that his own defense just sliding in sync right now. Jacobowski lines it up, and Jacobowski rattles around. Markowski will go right back up and get it. Markowski with it. Oh, he cuts it to a one-point lead. Another big offensive rebound in this tournament for Markowski. 30 seconds to go in the quarter. Ellis will hold it up top. You see Sinkowitz keep his space, didn't overcrowd him, didn't want to get burned or follow him. Get too close, smaller guy go right by you. 18 seconds and counting. They might be holding actually for the last shot. Schneider goes baseline, goes up, and no. Rebound to the side, 11 seconds to go, Lertola. Makes the move and gets the ball to Jacobowski. Jacobowski fading away. No. Sinkowitz inside position. Going to go up and in. Sinkowitz will give Otter Valley the lead. 16 to 15. Oh, that almost went. I was a little early. 16 15. Otter Valley with the lead over Fairhaven in the championship game. Let's see what transpires after the chalk talks at halftime. Fairhaven coming up with just 43 seconds left on the halftime clock. They had just a very enough time to get up and do a few shots. Otter Valley came out with 19 seconds left. Didn't warm up, just came out. So they were long, intense talks at halftime. This is Hernandez with the basketball. We're in the second half of play just underway. Otter Valley with the one-point lead. They have the white uniforms on. Fairhaven with the blue uniforms on. This is MSA Tip-Off Tournament 2007 Championship game. And Doran with the basketball had a very good first half of play. He's got zero fouls on him. And he has altered Otter Valley's inside game that was so dominant against MSJ. Hernandez with the cut, and that might have been blocked by Jacobowski. It's going to stay down and send Jacobowski definitely got a piece of it and blocked it out of bounds. And like I said, one, one big area was who's going to dictate the pace, the tempo of the ball game. And I think Fairhaven did that in the first half. Even though they're down by one, they only surrendered. I mean, the two teams combined for 31 points. That's not a lot. I mean, I, they have Doran up top against Sinkowitz. He turned, and the ball's going to be stolen away by Lertola, and there's going to be the first foul of the ball game on Doran as Lertola went down. Now be ball side out. Good crowd on hand. Like to welcome both the Fairhaven and Honor Valley viewing area to Channel 15, Peg TV, Munger Vision. Your two teams have made it to the finals, and it's been played with pretty much what I thought it would be a lot of intensity. Sinkowitz will kick it back out. They'll play a little inside outside up, and I like it that they go to Sinkowitz, and it's going to be blocked by Doran on Markowski. But I, I got talking, not that I know a darn thing about anything in this world, but. They stayed way away from Doran. Actually, were, were intimidated to the point where they would not go inside and play. 
I think at this point, attack him, see if you get him some foul trouble, take it to the hole. Yeah, he'll probably block a bunch of them, but you might pick up some fouls. Schneider with the bucket will give Fairhaven back the lead at 17 to 16. And again, it took Honor Valley two overtimes to get here and took Fairhaven a last second shot to win to get here. We could be looking at a lot more basketball than four, than four quarters of play tonight. And reversed, he left it on the rim. Sinkowitz almost with a pretty, pretty basket there. So it saves a one point for Haven lead. Six minutes left, third quarter. Then I'll stick around and we'll show you the trophy presentations. Oh, that was blocked by Markowski. Ball saved by Sinkowitz to Jacobowski to Lertola. And oh, well, hustled down the floor defensively by Markowski to get the rebound. I mean, the defensive player for, for him, but then Markowski, and there's a bucket, a three-pointer for Jacobowski. That was great play all the way around. From the defense getting down to the rebounding by Markowski to the kick out, and then the shot by Jacobowski. 19 to 17, Otter Valley takes the lead back over Fairhaven. Five second count, Condit never made a movement forward to advance the basketball. Nice play at the scores table. Oh yeah, and a good pass back, yeah. Oh, she won't turn around. In the first game tonight, the radio station from Lakes Region, Greg McCormick made a great play on a ball out of bounds, and now we've had another second great play made here in the second ball game. Jacobowski through Lertola. Oh, he hasn't shot tonight. I, I don't remember him. Christiano has got one three-pointer tonight. He's lining it up, and he's not going to get to knock down. Markowski just rips it away up, and that was blocked. But again, they're attacking inside. Jacobowski turned away that time. That was probably a good move. Lertola, a long rebound picked up by Hernandez. 19-17, Otter Valley with the lead. They're on defense. Here comes Hernandez and Fairhaven on the attack. He'll start. He'll stop. He'll kill the dribble. They'll come down in the corner to Condit, and Condit waits for the cut up top by Marcel, and Marcel back to Condit. They want to look inside to Schneider. Schneider being played by Markowski. Good matchup. Two good athletes right there. Jacobowski bought the ball fake, and Condit made him pay. Oh, he got the defender of Jacobowski in the air, and Condit rattled it in. We're tied at 19. And she's going to be Sinkowitz, Lertola, Christiana, and they reversed the ball all the way back around to Markowski. Good defense. Good defense by Fairhaven. Never gave an inch on that. They rotated the round the way you draw it up on a chalkboard. Godzik coming in for Condit for Fairhaven. And we've got Jacobowski tying his shoe right now. That's what the break in the action is. And we're tied at 19 with 4.18 to go in the third quarter of the championship game, the MSA tip off tournament. Been a great tournament so far. Good way to start off the high school basketball season. MSJ beating Montpelier in game number one tonight. Boy, Hernandez, slick ball handler, gets up in the air and then gives a pass off to Marcel. No. Looked good when it left his hand in a battle for the rebound. And Jacobowski going all the way to the hole, takes it up, fouled on the floor, and count the basket! Jacobowski! <laughs> Diet, they gave him the continuation. And he got it to drop, and he's going to the free throw line for the and one. And that makes it 21-19, Honor Valley with a two-point lead, a chance to make it a three right here. And that fall was called on Hernandez, his second personal. As we have Breslin, 13, coming in the ballgame now for Hernandez for Fairhaven. And now a different look after the main basket. Some soft pressure in the backcourt against Godzik. Godzik with a quick push, we're able to bring it up, goes between the legs, behind the back, does a spinorama. And that's just a real good look at his repertoire moves right there. Doran away from the hole. We'll get it off to Schneider. Schneider wants to dump it inside to Marcel, and the pass just wasn't there. He didn't force it. You see Bob Prenovost, you know, it's going to be on Christiana. Overplayed it. Overplayed it and got the foul. Two fouls on Christiana. And two team fouls also. 3.38 to go, third quarter action. Marcel right from his own bench. We'll get it off to Doran. There's the cut, Breslin up and foul. Jacobowski, I believe, might have just picked up his third foul. We'll get the official call.
13. It's Jacobowski with the foul, and it is his third foul. So that's a big foul. See if he'll come out now. And with 3.34 to go in the third quarter, and the first shot up by Breslin will be short. Nobody at the scores table. They're going to ride Jacobowski a little bit longer here with the three fouls. And it goes. Tell you, that was close to being touched on the cylinder by Dorn. No call there, and they'll make it a 22-20 ball game. Honor Valley with the lead. They'll come back to the circle, and this is going to be Lertola to Jacobowski. They had Christiana on the cut. They didn't get him the ball on the baseline. He'll turn fire and got it! Christiana, he had it the last time. They didn't give him the ball. This time he flashed open. They got him the basketball, and Doran didn't come out quick enough to contest the shot. They'll go down to Schneider. Schneider with his back to the basket. Defender in the air. Sneaks, ducks up underneath. Got it. Oh, what a move by Schneider. Mazeros at the scorer's table for Otter Valley. He'll be checking in the next opportunity. 2.56 to go. Third quarter has flown by. It's 24-22, Honor Valley. Sinkowitz will spin and travel. Got the big guy got freewheeling down there and just kind of lost track of himself, called for the travel. Jacobowski will sit down now. Mazeros will take his spot for the Honors. Honor Valley in those white uniforms. I mean, Fairhaven squad in the dark blue. Here at the Convent Avenue Gym, home of MSJ Basketball. Got their tip-off tournament championship game, and this is gonna be Marcel to Breslin behind the screen for a three-pointer, hits the back glass, no good. Ball will come down, go up, and got it! Offensive putback by Marcel. And that will tie the game up at 24. It was a one-point Otter Valley lead at halftime. Markowski to Mazeros, the fadeaway, no, around the rim, no good. Markowski, too hard off the glass, and Sinkowitz will battle Breslin, and it'll stay with Otter Valley. And Ellis, 22, coming in the ballgame now, four. And this has been the pattern, this ballgame, with two or three minutes left in each quarter. They have taken Doran out. He's only got the one foul. Much different tonight than he was Friday night for him. Mazeros can dribble, there he goes. He's gonna give the ball off to Christiana and Markowski flash, they didn't give him the basketball. Mazeros with the jump traveled, yeah. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. He took a little tour of the Common Avenue gym, got called for the travel, and we're tied at 24 with two minutes to go. And Godzik, third quarter action, Godzik number 10, able to bring the ball up, no problem, nobody in the backcourt. We've seen a few presses, nothing too major tonight from either side. And Breslin with a little push off, no call there. And we'll have Ellis pop out 22. He'll work it off the right elbow. The pass for Marcel was a, almost grabbed by Christiana. 133 to go in the third quarter. And Ellis, she's thinking what's back off from him. And we've got a timeout called by Fairhaven. Full timeout called. We'll go over to Coach Prenovos' huddle and we'll let him get planted. And then we'll read you the roster for Fairhaven. And for the Slaters this year, they have Mike Gonzik, number 10, number 13, Alex Breslin, Tyler Condits, number 14, Joel Hernandez, whereas 15, Christian Dorans, number 21, Dan Ellis, 22, Nate Marcel, 23, Todd Savage is 30, and Keith Schneider is number 31. And now for the Honor Valley Honors, coached by Bob Walsh in the white uniforms right here. They have Matt Babcock, number five. Andrew Merluzzi is 11. Grant Jacobowski is 13. Joey Mazeros is number 15. 20 is Justin Lertola. 22 is Derek Quinneville. 24, Tom Markowski. Cameron Clark, 30. Eli Christiana, 32. Alex Sinkowitz, 33. And Nick Pattis wears 40. And I think that's the first timeout called by either side here in the second half of play. It was 16 to 15 on our valley with the lead at halftime. It's now 24 all. So Points have come at a very premium, very costly tonight to find points. Marcel will have the basketball out right between the scorer's table and his team bench. And we're good to go. Godzik able to get free in the backcourt and get the pass, and that's Flirtola right on him. Throws it away. Just good defense. Yep. They came out and just could not handle the defense by Honor Valley. I'm surprised we don't see a little more pressure here in the second half in the backcourt by either side, but Lertola again will have nothing but a free pass to come up and set up against the zone. And the other thing that surprises me is when Doran does leave the game for Fairhaven, 
Adirelli doesn't really make it a big emphasis to go down into Sinkowitz, why he, he doesn't have the larger man on him. That's Lertola, rims in and out, tipped up and almost in by Christiana. Rebound with 56 seconds still, comes down to Schneider. He goes to Gadzik and Gadzik will work against Lertola. We are tied up. This is Ellis with the basketball. He'll come off and see Marcel look down inside and then turn his back on the defender and pivot and come off down to Breslin right between circles. That's Mazeros on him. Mazeros came in to replace Jacobowski who's got the three fouls. 33 seconds to go on the game clock. Adla, again, the rim's not very kind to these two teams who are not, you know, this isn't their home court, and the rim has certainly not been kind to them. That one rimmed out, that's what they left a hand, it looked good. 19 seconds to go. We'll see if Iowa Valley will play for the last shot, see how far they take the clock down. We're at 13 seconds, they're up top playing toss and catch. Christiana catches, no, long shot, long rebound. Eight seconds, seven, six, five, Godzik, and Breslin will give him the basket with just one second to go. That's the third quarter. Fairhaven retakes the lead in a quarter where they outscored Otter Valley by three points. They'll have a two-point lead at 26-24. I'm telling you, there's eight minutes on the clock. We're just starting the fourth quarter, but I don't know. It's got that feel like this might be a lot longer than eight minutes because they're so evenly matched up and it's such a chess match with the coaches that we could be looking at another extra time here. A lot of overtime <laughs> looms in the background. I gotta tell you, again, I do think that Fairhaven, even though they're only up by two, has dictated the tempo. Foul on the floor prior to the shot. That's gonna be Marcel that'll pick up the foul and the ball will be out on the baseline to Otter Valley. That's only the third team foul. There's only two team fouls on Honor Valley, three on Fairhaven. So, I mean, that's really at this point not a factor. It could come into play later on if they, somebody has to foul a lot to get the shot and the ball back. That's good by Jacobowski. And now we'll give the lead back to Honor Valley as a three ball, 27 26. The Otters with the lead. Winner will hold the big trophy up for the championship of the MSA tip off tournament and get their season off to a 2 0 start. Schneider and Jacobowski. With the steal, and I think it went off from Jacobowski's foot. It did. No, that was a good call. That was a very good call. I don't think they were questioning who the ball went off from. I think they were looking more for a foul. Yep. They jumped on Condit, 14. Got an illegal screen on Condit. That'll be the fourth team foul. And that's going to give you the second personal foul on Condit, and the ball will go over to Otter Valley. Now it'll be Jacobowski taking the ball out of bounds. He was just starting to heat up when he got his third foul, and he had to sit down for the rest of the third quarter. Christiana will get it to Lertola. Ball fake, defender in the air. He dribbles in closer off the glass. Lertola, I do believe that's his first bucket. If it isn't his first, it's only his second. But it couldn't come at a bigger time for the Otters. The lead goes to 29-26, Otter Valley. This is for Haven with the ball and Condon. The Marcel, they'll swing the ball over to Schneider and they flash Christiana, or they flash Doran, Christian Doran down inside and they give the ball. That goes through the hands of Fernandez out of play and it'll be Otter Valley basketball. No press in the back court, and I think we're still going to be looking at his zone defense. I'm waiting for him to get set up. Yes. Zone defense being played by Fairhaven, and they'll swing the ball over to Lertola, and he's trying to heat it up, and boy, it was online, but just rimmed around, and who's got it? Oh, Doran's got the ball. A big crowd of people there, and they wait for the big guy to stand up, and he'll tab it out to a guard. We'll actually get it off to Schneider, and Schneider, who very versatile, will bring it up like a point guard and give it off to Condit. They'll dump it down inside, and it's a push. Yeah, that was a pretty obvious push. That'll be on Sinkowitz. That'll be the third team foul. There'll be ball out of bounds on the baseline with Fairhaven's basket. They'll go to the box formation. First foul on Sinkowitz. And that, I'm not sure. Foul taken down. Hernandez will pick up. I believe it will be his third, and there'll be shots coming up. Two shots, yep. That is the third foul on Hernandez, and I'm not really sure what developed off that inbounds play. And I'm waiting for to see if somebody's coming to the scores table for 
Fairhaven, they're up by, Otter Valley's up by three and got it. 29-26, 30-26 on the main shot. 6-18 to go in regulation. That's the fifth team foul on Fairhaven and that shot's no good. That's gonna be Markowski and Schneider battling and Schneider will get the inside position. Great box out by Schneider on Markowski and here comes Hernandez. And Doran up top. And they rotate the ball around. Got a great shot from Marcel. We got a foul. White, I missed the number. Now I'll have to wait for the board to post it. 33, I think was picking up his second foul. They don't really utilize Doran like a low post player. They run him as part of that motion offense. Or flex and Lurto locked in, get the finish. Oh, I'll tell you what, Doran did some wicked hustling to get down the floor and get that missed rebound. Oh, put a bookmark right there. They blew a layup with a four point lead and 540 to go in the ball game. Boy, Marcel killed the dribble high and then Snyder came back and yeah, what happened there is Markowski gave up too much space to the baseline. He had no help on that side and once Schneider pulled even with him on the baseline. It was pretty much over and the foul called on Markowski. If anything, you want to turn back the other way and overplay the baseline. That's the inbounds pass to Dorn. He'll come off to Hernandez. Title game, Munger Vision. They all seem to go together, the big games. All the games are on Munger Vision. There's on time by a low post player. And there's three fouls on Sinkowitz. They went down low and they would have either had to concede an easy shot or foul. And three fouls on Sinkowitz with 5.20 to go. That is huge. And that will be an Otter Valley timeout. Full timeout taken. We'll follow Coach Walsh over. I'm looking at that bench and I'm not sure who he would go to to replace Sinkowitz. But you know, this is, I'm going to swing order for him because this is very private. The way the coach does this, he has a, like a town meeting almost, but we'll, we'll score the situation again. It's a full timeout taken. With 5.20 to go in the basketball game, it's 30-26 Otter Valley with the lead. Sinkowitz just picked up his third foul for Otter Valley. Team foul stand at six for Otter Valley, five for Fairhaven. And I'll give you the website for channel 15. It's www.pegtv.com. Their phone number is 747-0151. And they're located in Building 24 at the House Center. You can pick up their schedule for the evenings, showing of uh, what's on Channel 15, 20, and 21 in the Rutland Herald. You can also check the TV Guide channel. They, they have on the scroll all the public access programming. You can also watch the Channel 15 bulletin board, and they'll put up the schedule. And also the website has the schedule. So a lot of different ways to get the schedule. <clears throat> And we'll watch Condit take the ball out of bounds for Fairhaven number 14. So we'll see what strategies changes here. Sinkwood stays in the game with three fouls. They'll get it into Schneider up and well, I tell you, they had to play. Schneider got the ball five feet from the basket. Made a great move, just left it on the rim. It happens. Lertola with the basketball. Lertola and company up by four. They go down to Sinkwood and he couldn't handle the pass. And he's going to fade away and block. Doran blocked it, Doran controlled it. He'll go to Marcel and out of Condit. Condit front court, far side. Gets to the elbow, hits the trailer. Trailer on play with Marcel. Comes to Doran. They flash baseline, don't get the ball up. Three ball by Schneider, no good. Rebound almost tipped in by Christiana of Honor Valley, but he's able to regain the control after and get the ball out to Jacobowski. 4.42 to go, regulation. Markowski, you know, nice triangle passing. Jacobowski, got it, going. Hardly touched the net. And I tell you, when he got in foul trouble, you could feel the momentum he was gaining, the feel that he's picking it up. It's a seven point lead now for Otter Valley. And they throw the ball back, Schneider can't save it. Tried his best, pass is long. Here we go into the front court. Jacob Alski with the ball in the corner. And he'll give it to Lertola. He wants to heat up and no. Boy, it looked good. Sinkowitz on the back of Dorn. No whistle on the play and they'll come to Schneider now. Schneider wants Hernandez to go behind him. He'll shuffle the ball off to him. 3.57 to go in the basketball game. Hernandez went behind his back and Lertola almost made the pick. And I'll tell you, they're getting awful close to a five count. 
Man, I'll tell you, he palmed it. Yeah, that's the call. He carried the basketball. He palmed it. Gozik's coming in the basketball game for Fairhaven. I think he's going to replace Hernandez. And Fairhaven timeout. And it's a full timeout, 3.44 to go, 33-26, Honor Valley. Plenty of time left in this basketball game, 3.44 to go, just a seven point lead for Honor Valley. I forgot, Honor Valley went through two overtimes to beat MSJ to get here, and then Fairhaven had to win it in the last seconds to get here, so tension and tightness should be no problem. These guys should be right into it like mid-season form. Gazik with the ball after the Jacobowski miss. He might have actually been partially blocked from behind. That's going to be a turnover. Oh. Marcel coming to Gazik. He thought he's going to go the other way. Threw it long and it'll be a turnover. And boy, at this time in the ball game, down seven points to 322 to go. It's all about possessions. You need the ball to score. There is no shot clock in the state of Vermont. And when you do get the basketball offensively, you've got to get one, two, or three points out of the deal. And they're going to be a little more deliberate offensively. Jacobowski gets to the free throw line, got sealed off. We'll go to Christiana, and he got up in the air. And the month you go in the air with no game plan to pass it, you're in a lot of trouble. And that's going to be another turnover. This time it's going to be out of value the turnover. And here comes Godzik. Goes off to Marcel and the pass back as they just keep exchanging turnovers. Bertola gets the ball and delivers it. 2.47 to go, and after a series of turnovers, two points for the Otters, and they're up by nine. That, I do believe, is the largest lead in the basketball game by either side. Schneider and Slaters, they need a bucket right here. And Dorn, not down inside. Condit with a three ball! Condit with nothing but twine makes it 35-29, lead down to six. Honor Valley's got the ball, and that's going to be Jacobowski. He's been hot here. I'm not, I don't have a statistician, but I got to believe Jacobowski's the leading scorer for Honor Valley. Double dribble. Oh, they're calling a foul. Yeah, Kazik called for the foul, and each team now with six team fouls. Breslin coming in for Marcel for Fairhaven. And the Knicks fall by either side. It's the one-on-one, at least the one-on-one -on -one coming up. So basically, we're in the bonus. They'll bring it in to Sinkowitz. He popped out, and he'll pass up the outside shot. The defender gets in the air on Lortola. He wanted to bring the ball back to Sinkowitz. That pass lane was taken away, and they can sit outside for quite a while. There, there is no shot clock. As long as they keep the ball moving and don't get a five count, yeah, they can kill some time, or they can do that. Oh, blocked by Dora. Doran had to block it. It's better to let him take his chances of missing two or making one and two than to concede the easy shot. The ball went down to Markowski. It was a great entry pass. Good hands by Markowski. And then he knew what to do with it. Attack the hole. Yeah, and here we go. Comes tight ball game, low on time. Free throws, Markowski. But I tell ya, it looked good when it left his hands, but it was a little long and strong. And No, nope, couldn't get either one of them. And I believe it went off. Oh, Gosick saved it to Sinkowitz. And Brandon, Otter Valley, they'll retain possession, clocked down to 143. Now they can let the time run defensively to about 110, I would think. Then they're going to have to start thinking about fouling if Otter Valley likes to take the clock down. Jacobowski going to the line, shoot the one on one. One and one, yeah, and Jacobowski at the line, number 13. Like I said, he's had a big night from the three-point arc and usually a pretty good free throw shooter. We'll see what happens now. The pressure's on. Nope, they've missed. They're 0 for the last three from the free throw line. Markowski's two misses, now Jacobowski's. And this keeps for Haven still alive. Nice catch by Dorn. He's going to go hard to the hole, and I think it was a pass. I'm not really sure. Yeah, we got a timeout coming up for Otter Valley, and there'll be a full timeout taken with just 1.20 to go, and the Otter's up 35-29. Yeah, with 1.20 to go and down six points, if Otter Valley gets the ball and bounce, you've, you've got to start thinking Fairhaven's going to have to fall and not let time out. They can't let a lot of time elapse here, and there's the fall and quite a lot of choices here. See where they get the fall to. To be Godzik, we'll get the foul. 
Well, I'll tell you, it's also not a bad option. It was actually, to me, the only option, but on the rally, 0 for the last three from the line, so Brahaven getting on the box, getting set. That stopped the clock with 119 to go. And Lertola will get it. That's also the ninth team foul on Fairhaven. So the next foul that they commit will be the double bonus for Otter Valley. And that'll make it a 36-29 ball game. Seven point lead and it stays at seven points. So they they got away with that. They got the foul and they traded up. They gave up only one point instead of two. Gods it quickly into the front court to Condon. And this is the other thing. Fairhaven doesn't need three point shots right now. They just need points. Schneider wheels to the hole. There's a tip and no, nope. it's going to be a push from behind. Yeah, that's a good call. That's a good call by Mark. That's a very good call by Mark. Yeah. And it's a tenth fall and it's two shots coming up. It was the miss by Schneider. I mean, Schneider did everything right. The ball just wouldn't cooperate with him, go down the cylinder, but it's going to end up with Sinkowitz going to the line and. And this is two shots automatically now the rest of the night. There's also four fouls on Doran. And Sinkowitz nails it, makes it 37-29 Otter Valley. Nope, halfway down, pop back out. Here comes the push, Breslin in the ball game, 13. Breslin looking for the trailer on the play. We'll get the ball off to Schneider. Schneider, again, they're, they're in a situation where they just need points. They don't have to rely on just bombing threes. They can take a higher percentage shot. Of course, the more the clock runs, the more it becomes obvious that they do need threes. But right now, they, at this point, 43 seconds to go, 37-29. They just need baskets and stops. Lertola saved, oh, I thought Lertola stole it and saved it and threw the ball in the back court. In other words, and, but what really happened was he, he just stole it and went out of bounds, but a great effort by Lertola. I don't think he's been on the ballgame for a break for more than a minute, if that, tonight. I mean, he has played a ton of minutes and played very well. 39 seconds from the championship. Otter Valley on the defense, and this is Condit. Stolen away by Markowski. And, yeah, somebody's got to foul him to get it up to Sinkowitz. Over to Lertola, all the way down, and Jacobowski will pump fake a couple of times, and count it, Jacobowski. Oh, he was, he was vocal in the timeout, and he backed up his words. And that, with 24 seconds to go on the game clock and a 10-point lead, foul was called on Condit, his third personal. And Jacobowski makes an 11-point game with 24 seconds. All you really want to do right now is do not foul if you're on your valley. You'd want to send him to the line and stop the clock. Really, and seriously, just let him bring it up, work a little time. Schneider, pump fakes, nowhere to get the shot off over Markowski. Gives it off to Breslin, he's got a look, he fires away, no good. Rebound, tipped around by Jacobowski. And with four seconds, Three seconds, two seconds, it's going to be the Otter Valley Otters, the champions of the 2007 MSJ tip-off tournament. They beat MSJ in double overtime and defeat Fairhaven 40-29 to in the title game. It was 16-15 to at the half, Otter Valley by one. The offenses did get a little more heated up here in the second half, but it was a tough, grinded out, heavyweight affair, you know, round by round points here. And, We'll get the trophy presentations and why they shake hands and get the hardware all set up. I'll go to a fade and see in a sec. Congratulations to the 
Robinson.